fill in those things. Like, what is your district method of, because it says insert your method. Like, do, what do you use? And they fill in the PA. It seems like some of it we do know the information. And I thought, um, I thought we had filled in some of those. It was that all very just that generic. Fill in what you do later. Correct. And until we had, at first there was, well, do we do it for both sites? Right. And so or district wide. Or okay. is it a district wide policy? Okay. And so the collaboration of that um, needs to continue. Okay. Any other questions on that? Okay, 14.9, uh, State of California, Department of California, Highway Patrol, Safety Compliance Report. Update. Okay, so this is an annual update. Uh, this is the annual update for the Department of Highway Patrol. Um, and this is the Like, do you have to go show them in a certain amount of yeah. days? They give you a certain amount of days to go prove that you've, okay. That's so weird. That's so weird. Yeah. I'm here. I'm here. So, so we have 120 days to, to okay. get it ratified. We've done all the paperwork. We're just waiting on DMV to get back to us. And, and then they'll come in and, and just sign it off. Okay, cool. Do we know how to slip through the cracks? It was, so it was, we have a shared agreement with certain drivers who also work with other school districts. And a pull notice is not something that you can share. It's, it's been on the books for the last three years. And the same CHP officer has looked at it in the last three years, once a year. And, and then this year was just one year where, where he said, nope, that wasn't, that wasn't sufficient. And wanted a pull notice in every school district. So. So that's what happened. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So 1510. Uh, we have a presentation. Uh, career partnership. And we don't have a. Did you have a PowerPoint? Because. Uh, no. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll make this brief. Uh, as. Uh, most of you know, I'm Jim Underwood, so I'm one of several representatives on uh, coordinating committee for training together career careers partnership. And, uh, I think it was a month ago, maybe two months ago, where I just gave, gave an overview. But basically, the countywide effort uh, in partnership between educators and business community is to help develop career paths uh, and career path-based education and support. All the foundations that you all and Trinity Outreach Certified have uh, established, and, and and make this an effort to uh, kind of help bridge the gap from where where you're at uh, and uh, to get the business community more engaged. So, um, as indicated in the material that I provided to you, um, and as discussed with the CTE advisory uh, group yesterday, um, we have some funding for generalized organization and, and planning purposes um, from the local foundation. Uh, and they've been funding a five county area uh, to support individual county by county uh, planning efforts of the nature that, that we're undertaking. And I'm really excited to say that we've, we've got a list of about 65 what we call partners, well, educators and business partners uh, who have uh, attended meetings showing interest in this effort and uh, it, it really speaks to I think the opportunity to to build on a really good program that you know, Maria and faculty have, have developed uh, in recent years and get the business community actively involved by placing kids in career path education you know experience uh, opportunities um, and so Specifically tonight, uh, what's being requested and what was discussed by the CTE advisory group uh, with an affirmative uh, vote of support, uh, subject to you know, the kinds of details that that would need to be laid out in a memorandum of agreement or LU or uh, some formalized document if there's policy approval tonight, is 
if some of the funding that, that was recently awarded to your district in the form of the CTE IG grant, I understand it's about $303,000. Um, what Trinity Together is asking is for $30,000 of that so we can accelerate the process of developing the, the mechanisms to get kids actually placed in career experience uh, programs. Um, and, it's, and it's laid out in detail in what I provided. Um, and I would, I would just say that, you know, if your board uh, approves this, uh, we would work with, with staff and CTE board again to work out some of the details. For example, where would the staff person be located? We talked about at the CTE meeting uh, yesterday that it would make sense to have that person located on the school campus. That's where the interface between students uh, and faculty uh, would make most sense. Um, but there are a lot of those kinds of details that would be worked out in, in an MOU or a, an agreement that implements whatever policy decision, hopefully a favorable policy decision. But I'd be glad to answer any questions you want to have. My only concern is I would prefer to see a, a tighter compass or what you're actually going to do. That that this is the thing that bothers me is it's like if you voted to say yes, then it's like okay, we're voting yes, but maybe we won't like what you're doing back. You see what I'm saying? I, I understand. So yeah. so what's laid out there is it's free, uh, okay. but there's three things, three elements, uh, the details of which. Um, can and will need to be laid out with more specificity in a formal agreement if, if, if you want to proceed in this way. Um, and I agree. I mean, and that's why I indicated in, in the transfer letter at the bottom of that proposal that if the board approves this in concept, that that's exactly what we would do. And, and I also indicated, and I think it makes sense, that it would be refined. If there are specific, uh, you know, the three major points and, and specific action items under those. If there's something that the district wants, faculty wants, CTE recommends, let's let's address it. Let's refine it. Let's make it work because that's what's important. But I guess for me, isn't that sort of part before the work? I mean, wouldn't we want those before we say we'll give you thirty thousand of this money? It's almost it's it's almost too vague for me. Like I get what you're saying, but if, if we say yes and then. You were saying after we say yes, we'll give you the money, right. then we'll tell you specifically what we intend to do. So, it be the other way around. So, I'd be happy to answer any questions about the specifics that are not in the letter, but which are attached oh, to the letter. Okay. On, on this requirement, you mean? On this no. Whole? The grant allocation proposal with all the details? Yes. Yeah. So that. And is that piggybacking off? This is it in, in quick form, and then this is. Letter, yeah, the letter, one paragraph letter uh, bullet points to three primary. Yeah, exactly. Uh, development and implementation of that, right. and that's developed here. And yes. Right. Granted, it's a concept. Yeah. You know, could it have been a 20-page proposal? Yes, but I think, I mean, from our standpoint, that would have been part of the board as well. So yeah. I understand your yeah. concern. And, and I'm uh, not knowledgeable enough, but it's because aren't we doing a lot of this stuff now, Jamie? Like we started all those internships, there's kids at the hospital, there's kids at, like, and we've reached out to, isn't this stuff that however we're doing it ourselves, I don't know all the details of it. We started it, and Maria's phenomenal, but we have her one day a week. So she thought it was about full time with one day a week to place a little under 20 kids. So our goal was, we're still building this, you know, sure. we're in the embassy stages, sure. and her opinion was to work with somebody else, maybe have them on our campus and say, hey, we're going to shoot for 100%. That, I always do that, I know we can't, but we're going to shoot for 100% and try to get people into careers and maybe have people open new businesses up in town. People like Bill Sharp, Electric, was there, and he says, hey, I want your kids at your egg shop. I want them, and they can earn $100,000, but if they intern with me and they like it, that's their career. But if they go away to college and they, they don't like it, maybe they come back with a career. But the vocational part, they want to get them. Um, there's a student who wants to be an attorney, and I'll be honest, he went to Jim Underwood's. I get excited, you know that, and you got to have everything. And Jim calls me and goes, so hey, bud, 
kind of an attorney last time I checked. What's the paperwork? What's workers' comp? How are we looking? The kid's looking at me right now, and I tell him, hey, don't give me the alarm code or keys yet. We're going to work on that. So people like Jim are trying to say, hey, this is a great system. We need to formalize it, and we need to have the boots on the ground to be able to get the students out there. There's a lot of energy with the community wanting to come together, which I think is really, really important. Um, Travis Finch is sending out, Veronica is sending out, I believe, 550 notices to what they've located as businesses in Coffee Creek, Trinity Center, in Hay Fork, in Willow Creek, and trying to get people on. And our, our term's always been, we want our kids trained, we want them to come back here and raise their kids. There might be opportunities for them to leave high school, like the Southern Oregon model, and be able to actually work here in a job they can support their families. Sure. And this could do pre-union stuff. We have kids that want to do heavy equipment operating and different things. If we could get them in, get them an internship that's safe and legal, then they could possibly go get that training, come back here and work for Caltrans. So we haven't formalized that part yet. It's been more of a from the heart and be excited. We're at the point of having to be legal. That, so, I guess. so this might be boots on the ground to get more kids placed because somebody has to physically talk to, if there's 550 businesses, let's say there's 100, somebody has to make those phone calls. Somebody has to have a scattergram to who wants to be a physical therapist, who wants to be a CHP, and go through there. So my understanding was this position may work at the school, and that's their job. So they're through the K-12 folders, they pull out the interest, they work with the parents, they place them. Paul York's working with Shasta College, where that might be an option, where they work 60 hours and they get one Shasta College unit, and that might do that. So I think what Jim was thinking on this is having enough time and personnel to actually place the kids instead of us placing 20 out of 80. We're trying. And maybe all 80 don't want it, too. This is optional for them. I think, I think my problem is, is a lot of this is the feasibility of it. Okay. I just need, it's, it's too vague. Sure. I mean, it just sounds, you know, it's like, okay, we're going to fork out $30,000 to a countywide, because it's not just our school, it's a county school, and um, I have no problem. I think it's great for all kids, but I want to see, you know, like, okay, if, if we're forking in all this money, what are we getting for it? Sure. Is but it we couldn't do it to ourselves with right. the money that we have. Is it a half-time position? Last night at the CT meeting, we are talking it could be a full-time position. Well, that's what I, I'd like to see more about, just what we're getting. This just seems a little vague to me. I understand that. I mean, we're, we're trying to formalize. I understand those concerns. We do need to get more formal with yeah. our internships, so however we do it. Can bring back with a, with a little more details? Jim? Yeah, if, if there's um, some direction, maybe it's direction for your boys to stay on what kind of detail you want, and then we can discuss and provide that. Um, uh, and and we're, you know, with CTEs involved in there, you know, there are there are a thousand one ways to get there with limited resources. And as we talked about at CTE, we need to devote two or three full time people. Uh, so it's a matter of you know most efficiently estimating resources to get from a good foundation to something that's more fully operational. And and so that's what that's what's being proposed in frame, in concept. If there's specific direction, you can try to address that. The other question I have is, for this grant, um, the $30,000 that would be taken out of this grant, are we giving in something else that we really want to do? That's sort of my point. Yeah. We were going to do that and do X with it. What are we going to do? It sounds like we need more. It would be every year, yeah. so yeah. that's my So it sounds like we're yeah. supportive of yeah, yeah. the concept and just need more details. Do you guys need more uh, info than that? Or? I, I'm not sure what the details are, but um, we, can, we can talk about and try to provide more details and kind of speculate about what that means. All right, thank you, Jim. So, um, I guess we're just not taking any action on this. Okay, 1411. Uh, 1411, approval of resolution.
resolution 1718-32 self rescind excess liability plan. Okay, so if you, if you have the right to rescind the excess liability plan, you have to rescind the excess liability plan. Uh, schedule a couple things 
I wouldn't mind addressing on there if we could talk about the career wheel of eighth graders. That there's some there's some new things on there. So one thing I have, and I could be wrong. I, I've got to be honest. I've had parents come and say they're going to take the kids to Reading. This is our home. I don't want to educate them. So when I have concerns, I could be wrong. I don't mind my lose. But if we take if we have six kids to say they're going to go to a youth prep, for example, that's a teacher. So now we've lost that teacher for all the other kids, and we lost those students. And I think it's important that we have a pulse on that. We're a community school. So when I look at it, I'm not saying I'm right, but like looking at the math and science, I don't want to lose those students. We had a student say they're going to college connection because they felt that they need higher level classes. We welcome college connection, it's good for students, but fiscally, if 10 students here and 10 students there don't attend Trinity Alps because we're not attending to their needs, the other students that could have had that teacher all day long, 170 students, that teacher's gone because seven students left. I, I looked at that, I've always looked at it that way. And so there's business and there's taking care of kids, and I understand all those have got to mesh together. I absolutely understand if we cannot afford this, we cannot put the district in, in that type of situation. So I understand that from a financial point. Completely understand that. I just want to be cautious of. I don't want to lose kids, so we have the opportunity to nurture, to love, to be here, and I don't want to go to other schools. So we're in a competitive world. I want to be a Trinity Alps as competitive as possible. If somebody else can offer something, then we should be able to offer it. We have amazing teachers. We started this meeting with a national champion, with state champions. Our teachers do a phenomenal job. We live in a great place. We have the two record shirts like Athens, Hub Year, Foot Hill didn't, U Prep didn't, Enterprise didn't, Red Bluff didn't. All the schools, Mount Shasta, not even close, we can't. So, so Scholar Athens, top two in the entire Reddit Church Light area. So Scholar Athens, and our kids travel farther than anybody. So a lot of things we're doing are absolutely amazing. I just get concerned that we're not constantly trying to keep a pulse on. It kills me when a parent comes in, hey, I love you, but oh, we're leaving. No, you're not, you're not leaving. What, what would it take? And we're not being held hostage. You know, it's not like we'll just choose us or somebody else. What can we do about that? Can we talk about it? So in the schedule, something I was excited about is the eighth graders. The best way to get ready for college is take a college class in high school. I believe that. To have a college teacher, they figured out. What's the best way to get ready for high school? That is a difficult time. We bring our eighth graders up. We marry our district. We're a unified district. We're not two separate schools. So we had an idea a long time ago. We've been working on it. Had an opportunity to do a schedule quick that nobody's looking to speak back out in there and show me. But we looked at it and we thought our FFA program, state champs, every elementary eighth grader here will have nine weeks of horticulture, which our teachers are doing a phenomenal job in. So they have nine weeks of horticulture, every student's an FFA program. Nine weeks of computer science. So they'll all have computer science to get ready. We can, we can have standards for what we need to be ready in high school with computers. Elementary school is doing a great job. We got that last time up at the high school. Then we have nine weeks of art. We have a wonderful art teacher. What a great opportunity to learn to kill We have to be able to have our students work. And then every eighth grader in our district will, and we're still working on this, and I've been talking to the person, will have a student 90 dual enrolled class. Every single, and a student success, and it gets them ready for high school, gets ready for college. Every one of our students will have a college transfer. So eighth graders will come in, and then they want to go to the high school and take a dual enrollment class. They're already a Shaft College student. All they have to do is it's two minutes to do it. So that part of the schedule, that's absolutely invigorating. It's we were built and Trinity coming together, one district, that's what we talked about a long time ago, we unified. I absolutely understand finances, you guys. So the schedule, I think that schedule, there's going to be some low numbers on it. But when you look at an LCAP, and you look at there's possibly $800,000 that our district gets that some districts do not, if you do not have three or new students and you do not have unduplicated youth, there are districts our size that might get a $100,000 LCAP. So in that area, we're supposed to serve those students in equity. Somebody that's really high in math, and we provide some of the form, that to me is equity. Somebody that's really low, and we need to provide intervention, that's equity. We need to go all the way through the spectrum. All of our students are different. I don't want us to be, hey, here's the, hey, we're going to focus on high, we're going to focus on this. That LCAP says that, we're supposed to do that. So I, in my feelings, and listening to our people, because they talk, and I love them, but they, they'll tell you, trust me. And so you don't have this teacher, you don't have that. I view that one position as an equity position, that we might have been missing a vote on some of those high classes. 
And I, I just think logically, if seven kids leave, that's that teacher anyway. Now we've lost seven of our kids and we don't have that teacher. You can't guarantee they're going to stay or they're going to go, but if we do our absolute best job with the schedule, it's not that hard to sell training high school. It's an amazing place. It really is. It, it's, we had one student, I want to tell you guys this. They went to St. Bernard High School, they went to Hoopa High School, they went to Arcata High School, they went to McKinley High School, they came to Trinity High School. And she has love them. She went, her mom sat down and said, we're buying a house here, this is the best school for my kid. And that was this year. And it was the offerings that we had at our school, you guys. We do do amazing stuff. I know we got to fix up, but it's, that schedule's a good one, I think. So we can come just individually talk to you on Absolutely. And if numbers are too low and we have to look at that, I understand that. Because we have to do this very, very quickly. Sure. So there isn't a guarantee that we have this many students who want this or this. Can you explain the homeroom? The homeroom. Okay, so the homeroom was the idea of that we had with a lot of staff meetings. And the idea of homeroom was kind of steps in an intervention. Uh, teacher will get a group of students. So um, let's say Amanda Club. She will get a group of 20 students. She will have them every day in the morning. And so there's five days during the week. So the first day, she'll take four of the students. She'll look at their quick lookup. She'll try to provide interventions. Where can we go? Who's struggling? Maybe who's not challenged? You know, where are they at? And those teachers will have those 20 kids that they'll have for all four years. So once they pick them up, there's that relationship. There's that type of attitude with something's going on. Hey, Joe got suspended today. That's your kid. You can go talk to him. And so it's that idea of being more of a family. So that's a great idea. And so the homeroom would be in with that schedule, and they would go through and be able to do that. And if you guys notice the dual enrollment classes have went up, we're offering more CTE classes. Your CTE teachers work really hard. Those aren't easy to get approved. Um, and so all those classes are college credit. And so that's, that's wonderful, too. And we can work on the other side of the dual enrollment. You have to have teachers with master's degrees. It, that's something we have to have people go back and have to get that in areas. The CTE teachers are qualified to teach Shasta, so they're qualified to teach Russ, so it's great. But the numbers we don't know yet. We'll know in three days. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Do you think? We are doing our state testing right now. 
That's always a challenge to keep students motivated. We have the Adams Family Musical, which was great. I hope you guys were able to uh, make that. They, they did a fantastic performance. Um, Brittany Meredith did a great job with uh, Mr. Imhoff. I think Mr. <laughs> he, did a, he did an excellent job with the kids. Um, it was really wonderful to watch. Uh, we had our county selling and we had our mayor with Dave Fox, our eighth grader. So that was really fantastic. She was kind of a seller. Um, let's see here. Well, oh, all of our eighth grade students took the PSAT. And Jamie, you have to kind of tell a little bit more about the PSAT. But that was something, again, Jamie was really working towards is having those eighth grade students take that PSAT um, at the eighth grade level. So we brought them all in here in the gym, um, explained it away. Caitlin Gray did a great job of, of proctoring it. Um, and it, it was it worked out very nicely. So when will they get their results? A couple of weeks. Nice. And she'll come back down and kind of talk to them about it. Okay, I'm going to come down. I'm ready. Nice. Uh, let's see here. We had our kindergarten roundup earlier in the month as well, or at the end of April. And uh, we had about 30 students, so that was good. And we know there will be more to come, so that was really, that was really nice to see uh, and show off what we got going on down here. Uh, another trip to Abbott is happening tomorrow. They go everywhere, so Sam's doing a great job with that one. They went to Chico uh, on the 27th as well. I'm really excited about this one. We took a group of our sixth grade students to the Sierra Cascade Logging Conference, and they paid us $300 to go, so that makes it very worth it. So uh, I, I let we're the only school in Trinity County that goes. Um, it's something that we're trying that I think is really important for this and for this community to show that for the state. They go to an active logging site uh, in Chimel Town. There's Cal Fires there. Um, the Sierra Pacific Industries is there, and um, they they show from the 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 start of the, the logging site to the end, except for we don't go to the bell, which I'm working on, so we'll see if we go to the I've never been to the bell, so I'm excited about that. Uh, enchilada dinners, very successful, again, so that was fun. And we could have bought 10 enchiladas for 10 bucks tonight, so that's good. <laughs> Open house was tonight, it was fantastic. Uh, our book fair was going great, uh, just really good support. Um, great families, great students, great parents. Uh, it was a really fun time, so thank you for taking the time to come check us out. And still, if you want to come check out that Success for All program, come in. Yeah. Nice. And that's probably not even the boosters for all those. I put a little bit of money in that. Okay, so. um, uh, and that goes towards the environmental camp for sixth grade. So and that's really good. Uh, moving up assembly will be on the 17th at the high school, which uh, if we have principal support for the high school, they will be talking about that. Get ready for that. And there are several, and I mean several, field trips happening. So we are very, very busy. The end is in the future, and we see it, and it's very busy around here. But it's going to go very well. Good burgers tonight, too. Did you get burgers? No, just sleep them. <laughs> All right, so they gave me a script. And I didn't follow it, and so I have to go back to 14.1 because I didn't read out the statement, and I don't want to go to jail. So back at 14.1, I have sorry, uh, we had a motion in a second, and so what we all voted for was a contract for principal Katie for Boko. For Boko, sorry. Just try not to say it. And it will just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, it includes a 2018 salary of $99,710 and a health benefit cap of $12,800 for a term of two years. And then the 14.2 was a contract for a district interim superintendent Edward Diverso. It includes a daily rate of $400 per day of service with a monthly not to exceed of $4,800 for a term on a month to month basis. All right, so that brings us to 15 reports. And the first one is the ROP report. Lynn, you are our rep. Resource for superintendents and the cabinet. So 
But it's just it, it's just interesting that it's talking about how CTE really helps low-income students, which we have quite a few. Um, and they have they get higher scores on standardized tests and also graduate graduation rate is much higher when the schools they attend emphasize per education. So that that is what the thing we are doing. And then um, these the other things that this is uh, about the college for indicator, which um, there's three um, levels. One is prepared, one is approaching prepared, and one is not prepared. And it just talks about um, how how the college and careers. Um, my <laughs> Sorry. The yes, the dashboard. It's a combination of the, the CT and the academics that um, they're going to start counting um, towards the schools, all the schools in California now. And so it talks about to be prepared, for instance, you score a level three or standard vet on um, your ELA and math in your Smarter Balance Assessments. AP scores count on there. We don't do international baccalaureate. Uh, dual enrollment counts on there, which we are doing. Um, AP and G requirements, which most of our classes do. And then this um, CT or for technical education pathway. And then it's that's prepared. And then approaching prepared is the same thing. It's just a few less things. And then not prepared, prepared means they did not meet any of the measures um, or did not graduate. So this was just some information. I have a little extra here if anybody wants it. And then, no problem. And then this just talks about the um, Shasta Trinity ROP, which I'm also sitting on their board. And it, it talks about how CTE works for high school students. And um, it's pretty amazing. It's a great program. So let's just talk about it. Questions? Yeah, and then at JPA that we're part of Chess Training ROP, we have four slots for students that cost us nothing if we can ever solve the transportation issues that students have. And those are great programs that include computer repair, fire fighting, some medical uh, careers, cooking, you think they actually have a kitchen and a restaurant, and it's a great program. We just, if we could ever figure out how to get people, and as James worked on it in a million ways, and Anyway, it's, just, it's hard to get somebody to go down there all the time. So, uh, any ideas? We're always trying to figure things out. So, Ryan, um, would you like to report on anything? Anything to report? I have something. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm Uh, my, my report's going to be pretty short. I just wanted to bring an uh, update on the last board meeting that uh, uh, we uh, canceled some bids uh, due to lack of involvement. Um, so we put those out to bid again for the door replacements and hardware uh, for 99% of the high school, which we've been working on trying to get done for a lot of uh, the issues, the ADA issues that are uh, at the high school. So, been opening for those projects for today. So with everything going on, I, I'm going to have to probably request uh, that the board members uh, come together for a short meeting um, at another day uh, soon so we can go over the, those bids and everything else. And that way you can just uh, go All right, so how about you? Sorry, for Alex. Yeah. yeah, so it was a little bit tight due yeah. to the bid advertisements, uh, criteria, and everything else. It just kind of Hey Ryan, just a quick question for you yes. on, on that list that, that you had uh, that you were, you were repairing items that yes. we got from the letter. How's that list coming along? The list is great. I mean, every, a lot of things are easily addressed. Okay. Um, and a lot of the a lot of the other uh, items on that list actually kind of rolled into what is going on with the plans and everything else as far as the modernization process. Uh, which I'd love to accelerate at, at a time, you know, when we can. So, so we're going to meet the deadlines that we need to? That is correct. Okay, thanks. All right. Thank you, Ryan. You're welcome. THS Athletic Director. Well, I wasn't.
track is going away for the league championship tomorrow, or league meet tomorrow. Uh, section or division meet is next Friday, and then the large schools meet for the entire north section is the following Friday. So they are the only ones still doing sports right now. Okay. Uh, we have high hopes of getting a football coach and volleyball coach soon, and those should be going very quickly. So. Okay. Um, transportation. So we have, I don't think I need. We have a new driver, Larry Emerson, who just passed his test. He's been driving this month. I'm um, quite a bit on a lot of those athletic trips or covering routes for athletic trips. Um, this time of year, we're super busy going to Shasta Caverns, um, kindergarten track meets, track meets in Durham. It's pretty tough being a bus driver. Um, but we do it because we love the kids. And uh, that's about it. You're not for summertime. Thank you. Thanks, Luke. Do you want to say anything on CSEA? Uh, nothing to report. Okay. Just say, I just wanted to also say thank you to my crew for the hard work that they did around here for the open house and everything. Oh, uh, okay, so, so kudos up. And, and the setup and uh, the breakdown of the uh, board meetings. <laughs> 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 yeah, the board meeting three places was pretty amazing too. And for all of you, that keep coming and following us around. I think uh, we're going to go to Disneyland next. <laughs> 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 all right, um, how about this day from here? Anything on CTA? No. Okay. West Site Council, anyone? Um, we've been really working on that site council or the single plan, which has a new template, which is really exciting. For all of us. <laughs> single school plan. So we've been really working hard on that single school plan. Um, we're going to meet again and, and get it to you guys for that June meeting. Cool. How about uh, THS Site Council?
I'm good. Ditto for everything. And like I said, I think we've got a great staff, and I'm really looking forward to an exciting Yeah, and I appreciate um, all the staff support, the district office support. Um, also, Sarah, with the Office of Education, they've been uh, coming around us and providing us uh, credential support and everything, and uh, LCAP support. And so, anyway, our goal is to not function as a siloed school. We, we need to work with all the schools in the county, we need to work with the county office of education and with the betterment of uh, students. And we just, we really want to change the culture. Um, so we need you to help us do that. So, thank you. Do we have any uh, items for next board meeting besides what we've already given? Yeah, what we've told you, we're going to bring back the. I just came in and they just started talking, you know, like they didn't really, they, they weren't letting us talk or address anything, they just went right into their, you know, we're going to do 